So first of all, thank you all for joining me again. And I want to share with you some strategies that we use here at the Academy and things I've used as an educator that have helped develop some things in our students where not only are they coming up with creative ideas, but the way that they're able to share those ideas with others. Because we all know you may have the best idea, but you got to get that information out there. I told you about Willie and the business cards. I just have one more brief story. And then after that, no more stories. Okay, so I want to share with you um, something let me pull up my slide here. So this is Christopher. And I will tell you that when our school started, um, our school started in the year 2007. And we had all of these global business leaders that were going to be in Atlanta for something called the America's Competitiveness Forum. And it was something about where they were talking about the economy. They had world leaders from all over and they were coming to converge. Well, Ron and I, this was the year our school had just started. As a matter of fact, it was the summer before the school started and we, we knew who our students would be, but we hadn't even really had them in the building yet. And so we were invited to have the people come to our school. I guess we invited them and they said, yes. We're like, we're gonna have all these world leaders, but but oh my gosh, we haven't even had our students here yet. So our building was being renovated because it's a hundred year old dilapidated factory. And as our building was being renovated, we had the students meet us at the YMCA. And every day at the YMCA, we taught them, we kind of gave them an initiation about the school, what we were gonna stand for. We taught them about the, comp the countries that are gonna be represented at this competitiveness forum. And we taught them some soft skills that's really a huge part of what we do. Now, I realize that right now, nobody's shaking anybody's hand. And a matter of fact, we don't know. It may change where handshakes are never even something people do anymore. There may be other forms of greeting. But the idea behind it was that we would give a firm handshake, but not only a handshake. It's how do you look someone in the eye? How do you speak with confidence? How do you introduce yourself? And so we would work every day. Now, this is Christopher. He doesn't mind me telling you about him because we talk about it. But Christopher, during the orientation, was the most shy student we had in the whole class. He would mumble his name. You'd say, you know, and, and we would practice, you know, Christopher, come up and greet yourself. You know, shake my hand, introduce yourself. And he'd be like, my name is Christopher. Or like, baby, look me in the eyes. Say your name with pride. It's important. Names are important. And so for two weeks, we did this exercise. Well, on the day of the competitiveness forum, um, we had these huge black limo secret service, all these world leaders that came to our school. And we were so nervous. We were standing out in the parking lot and this big stretch limo pulls up and that's Carlos Gutierrez. He used to be the secretary of um, secretary of commerce for the entire country. So he steps out of the car and y'all, he looks so imposing, but I think anybody stepping out of a stretch limo with little American flags and secret service, you're gonna look kind of imposing, right? So he steps out of the car and all the kids were just lined up on the sidewalk and out of everybody, Christopher is the child. He steps forward. He puts his hand out. He said, welcome to the Ron Clark Academy. My name is Christopher Henderson. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to have you here today. Welcome to the Ron Clark. And, and he said, indeed an honor and pleasure to have you here today. Y'all, and, and Carlos Gutierrez, look at his face. Y'all, I don't know, but if I were you, would you not be impressed? I mean, look at that, that confidence that little boy had right there. And to this day, he's doing great. He's a kid that has the most confidence. He's so eloquent. He's, he's thriving in, in this world. And so I tell you that because sometimes if you teach kids these skills, it actually translates not only to their ability to meet people, but it also translates to their even their academic confidence, their way to, to share what their ideas are with other people. So um, it was a game changer for me. If you had stepped the picture of Ron and me, because we were standing down the sidewalk, if you had turned the camera and had taken a picture of us, this would have been our mouse because we didn't know that Christopher of all kids, but we prepared him by giving them the skills that he needs. And so we are big at engaging our students with other adults, other adults in the community. And so we've worked really hard to build partnerships. And y'all, a lot of times schools will do great things like career fairs and stuff like that, but we want adults in the building more often than that. And we want them to have business leaders in our community who are entrepreneurs, who are executives, who are people who've had tremendous success because it helps them to understand how to network with those people, but also they have so much to learn from those people. Now, one thing that's a very, very important part of that though, is you need to make sure that if you invite business leaders into your school, that they reflect all different types of people. For example, I don't want all white business leaders coming to my school. A lot of my students are African-American. I want to have black 
entrepreneurs and black CEOs. I want to have uh, Latino CEOs. I want to have men. I want to have women. I want to have people from every demographic who come in because students, I can tell them, I see you. I see you. You could be anything you want to be, but there's somebody who looks like them telling them that that's going to be something that's going to really help them understand that. Oh, it's true. It's true. She's telling me the truth because look at the success that these people have had. So that's a really important point. So what we do is we'll go to Rotary clubs. We go to businesses and what we'll do ahead of time is we do teach our kids when we can shake hands, how to shake hands, but we also teach them conversational skills. How do you have a conversation with someone? How do you teach them? Well, we practice, we actually practice and it is worth the academic time you take to do this because it will translate to success for them in so many ways, even their ability in class to be able to share their ideas and their thoughts. So for example, if I knew that Mr. Crumpler from Bank of America was coming, I'm gonna find his bio online or perhaps his LinkedIn or even ask him for his bio if I can't find it. But right these days, it's very easy to find those things. And I'm gonna take a minute with my kids and I'm gonna say, okay, this is Mr. Crumpler. He's here with the Bank of America. And so what would be some meaningful things to ask him? And so we'll talk about, here's his bio. What do these things, what do these words mean? What do you think his job is? What do you think he does there? Okay, what would be a logical question? You see, if you don't help kids understand what would be a logical question, they may say something really inappropriate, but it's not their fault. They may say something like, well, well, you make for the bank, you know, you, you must make a lot of money. Well, that would not be appropriate. But how are they going to know that if they're a little kid, if you haven't explained that to them? And so we practice some conversational skills. And then I'll say, you know, when you ask somebody questions, you want to make ask questions about them, but you don't just keep peppering them with questions. You ask follow-up questions. Like if, you know, they say their favorite hobby is painting, you don't just say, oh, okay, well then where do, how many kids do you have? You want to say, oh, what kind of artwork do you paint? Or have you always painted? And so we teach them how to do that kind of conversational skills. So then what we do is we ask adults to come to our school at different events. Like you could even say, you know what? I'm going to ask five executives to come to my, my classroom and just spend 20 minutes of their time. Here's the great thing. Here's why they like to come. They don't have to prepare anything. I say, just be you. Just come. But what I want you to do is just interact with my students. And so when my students, they see that adult come in, they're supposed to, you know, greet them shake their hand if they can shake their hand, you know, talk to them, introduce themselves. And so they get practice doing that. And then I ask the adults to give feedback on, you know, how can this person be even more natural? Because sometimes when you're first teaching this to kids, they'll be a little robotic. Um, how can you, um, you know, what were some things that you really enjoyed about the conversation? What were some things to work on? And they may say, well, you know what? Um, perhaps, you know, you, you were kind of not, I, I noticed you weren't listening. You were looking behind me when I was talking at, you know, the kid behind you instead of really feeling like I was engaged with you. And so they'll give feedback and it's really, really helpful. And if you're like, how do I even start? I would tell you just go to if there is a community partner that you have get some people employees from there or if there are it is a rotary club or um, some kind of um, commerce club or something like that in your area, then you go to them and just ask are there any adults that be willing to volunteer their time and just come to my class for 30 minutes and engage with my students. When I told you that Willie I had them in that ballroom and they walked out when I said work the room, they knew exactly what that meant because they had practiced it in a smaller setting. And so they're like, okay, it's just a bigger room. I'm gonna do what I do. And so they felt confident doing it. Now, over the years, because we do this a lot, um, this has grown into something that we have put a lot more, um, a lot more of a bigger framework around where we do something that we call the amazing shake. And I wanna share it with you, but I'm also gonna share some resources that are free for you to have that you could use with your kids too, that are really, really helpful if you wanna do one. So as I said, like here's an executive right here and, and, and they're, they're, they came in and they're shaking their hands. Here we go is another one. These are our kids working the room. So here's how the amazing shake works. There's a given day at our school every year and it has grown over the years. So you could start with this being a very small thing, but because I'm gonna tell you the big picture, like what we do now, but then I'm gonna tell you how you can really scope, scale it down to what you do. So what we do is we get all these business leaders to come in. Now in our city, because we've been doing this so long, we actually have business leaders who ask us if they can participate because they understand that we're teaching the kind of skills that they want to see in their employees one day. And so we ask them all to come to the school on a certain day. We have a path set up all throughout the school where these people are stationed. And what happens is one at a time, student walks up to the person, they introduce themselves and they engage in conversation for one minute. You hear a gong, then they move to the next place. They have a scorecard. They're scored on their ability to have a conversation, their poise, their confidence, all these different things. You may say, what if it's a really shy child? The beauty of this is that we talk about that. You have to be very candid with kids and say, you know what, being introverted or being shy, that's a beautiful personality trait because you know why? You listen more than you speak. 
you're somebody who probably pays attention to things that sometimes other people don't pay attention to. But even if you're shy in this world, I want people to know all that's within you. I want people to know your ideas. I want people to know your thoughts. And so I want you to be able to share them with somebody else. And so because it's usually one-on-one -on -one conversation too, those kids really start to build that confidence because the one-on-one -on -one conversations. So what they do is they, they get a score between one and 10. It's just like kind of gut instinct. And then they move to the next person. They weave all the way around the building. And at the end, we narrow it down to the top 25 and then the 15 and so on. And they get feedback from the adults on how they can increase and do better with their soft skills. After we get down to the top 25, we actually have a bus and we take them to another location, but you wouldn't have to do that. You could do that in your building. So right here, these are my students. They are at a law firm in Atlanta. And so they are told they have to work the room. And so 25 kids have to walk in and they have to work the room and they have to have conversations with these exec, you know, these lawyers for an hour, or 30 minutes. Can you imagine that would be very, very, um, very, very overwhelming. Someone just asked if there's a video. Yeah, I'm gonna show you where there's a resource of even how to practice some of these things in just a second, like how we coach the kids. I'm gonna give you access to all of that, okay? So, so there they are, they're working the room. Um, and afterward, the lawyers met with them and said, these are some things y'all did really well, or this is something that somebody said that made a big difference for me. Um, here, here's Neve, and she's talking to at the, at the, at the thing now. After we narrowed it down, we also, it's not just one-on-one -on -one conversation, it's also public speaking and thinking on your feet. So because these are kids we're dealing with, we do some fun stuff. And every year we change up. One thing I should back up and say, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself, is that when we're doing those challenges, one-to-one, -one, we sometimes throw things in there to make it challenging. Um, because we don't want kids to be robotic because we don't want a kid to walk up to every person and have the same three questions they're going to ask and have those down and then it sounds very rehearsed and it's not genuine. And so um, the students here that somebody was asking the students here, these are uh, middle school students. So uh, fifth through eighth grade in these particular photos, but we have fourth graders we teach it to as well. So um, what they do is um, they may walk up to somebody, you know, and they're so set on shaking that hand, but the person may turn around and have the arm in a sling. Well, you can't take that person's hand and, you know, so how do they respond? Well, you, this, you just don't shake the hand, but just, you know, you know, kind of nod or they're engaged in the conversation. Or we had them turn around a corner and there was a woman that had all this box of pencils. And as soon as they turned the corners, they dropped the pencils. Well, some kids were so focused on that darn handshake, they left the pencils on the floor. Well, that's not what you would want to do. If you're thinking on your feet, oh, let me help you with those. Oh, by, and as you're picking them up, oh, by the way, my name is Niles. What's your name? And so they learn to be natural, but also to be engaging and to have conversations. And so um, they walked around, they sit down in one place and they have a conversation. Then they turn the corner. Well, when they turn the corner, the person says, what was the name of the person that you just met? Y'all, I'm bad at names. That one would get me when I was younger, but I, I really have to work at names. But names are so important, y'all. Names are so important. And how you pronounce people's names, it's a sign of respect. And so it's really important. And so they go through, and those are the kinds of challenges we do. Well, because this has become an event at our school, and actually schools around the country now emulate and do some of these things we've done, um, they, uh, we add some things in there to really make it fun and also to make it a little, you know, kitschy for middle school kids. So for example, here we are, we're, um, you can see we're at a high rise in Atlanta at a business there, but the kids don't know what's going to come next. They never know what is going to be the next challenge. Well, they're in a waiting room. We say, congratulations, Mr. Or, you know, Miss President, whatever it was, a female, you know, they'd say, congratulations, Madam President. And then he'd say, um, your, your fans are awaiting you. Um, go give your acceptance speech. And so here, Michael, he walks out and he walks to the podium as he's thinking, he's thinking, oh my God, I got to come up with a speech. I'm the president. And so they have to sit there and give the president uh, and, and give the talk. And yes, we can do this virtually. I'm going to show you how we do that too. Um, and so he has to give a speech, but he's got like two minutes to do it. And he has to take questions about politics because that's something we teach our kids. We don't ever tell our kids aside, but we teach them how to engage in conversation about politics based on, um, and, and, and actually argue from both sides. So uh, there's Michael doing that. Um, here we, this is a local news reporter from our, our local television station, Donna Lowry. And so they had to go and sit down and be interviewed on camera. Um, and so that was a fun thing to do. And we've even done it where there's not really, they're not really live on camera, but at the moment, they don't know if they're on camera on television or not. So that's a, a fun little activity we did. Um, this is called the circle of doom. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And we always go, dun, dun, dun. but that's because it's a middle school activity, right? So what we do is there's an inner circle of kids and an outer circle of adults. And what happens is the students sit there and they are, they're drilled with questions. And some of them are character questions. Some of them are uh, current events questions. Some of them are questions just about who they are. Some of them are, they're all different kinds of questions, but they're asked a question for one minute 
and then the bell rings and then they move to the next seat. The outer ring stays put. And so they go around the circle and they're interviewed by every single person. It's kind of like speed dating, but, <laughs> but not. Um, and so there they are being interviewed by executives in Atlanta. Um, sometimes even the most meaningful things are um, teaching kids how to think on their feet. Sometimes if you take kids to a meal, um, that's a really, really interesting thing to do. Um, we have, because we're fortunate because now this has caught on. We have so many people who are engaged in this. We actually had Gail King um, uh, eat lunch with some of our students in one of the rounds, like one of the final rounds. And the little girl that won, it was great that she won because she was the most quiet kid in class. And so people saw how the, the poise that she had in the thought and how she listened and how she engaged. But when they had lunch, she ordered sushi. And one of the other kids that was like destined to win this thing um, had a big old hamburger and French fries. And so as they're talking, you know, Caitlin was sitting there with her little chopsticks and eating her sushi and would put them down. It was listening. And that child was going in on that burger. And at the end, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with eating your hamburger. But at the end, you know, the comment was you kind of were more excited about the hamburger than me. I didn't feel like you were really engaging with me. Um, but one of the things that we want is also, as I'm sharing this with you, we want our kids to take this beyond the classroom. Like we want them, whenever they go out into the real world, I want them to use these skills in the real world. So this was actually a setup. We were, um, at, we, the kids thought they were at breakfast. These are some of the kids that were finalists before they went to the next round. Well, this young lady came over and she said, I'm so sorry. She said, you know, do you all have room for me to join you at your table? Well, we acted like we didn't know her, but I knew her. And she was one of Ron's former students. And so she's an adult. And, and so I said, of course, let's make room for you. So she sat down with us, but you know, they, they kind of thought, well, this is kind of weird, this strange woman joining us, but she sat down with us. And it was interesting because three of the kids treated her like she was family. They were just like, well, what are you doing? And they started talking to her. And so it showed us that, okay, you're going to do this, not only when you're being judged, but this is a skill we want you to have. One child didn't have any desire to have a conversation. He just kind of sat there the whole time. And so that child got out. It was actually a judging round, but the lesson in it was that we wanted kids to understand that we want you to be like this always, not just because there's a score involved, but we want you to engage with other people. And so um, that's a fun thing to do. Here, they were at a local television station being interviewed. Um, here we had, this is just in our gym. This is not a real Tonight Show, but we had a, a person that pretended he was a host and he would interview them in groups and ask them questions. And that's a skill too, because are you interrupting the person beside you? Are you saying what you want to say? Or are you, are you having the person interrupt you? Um, here we have, um, <laughs> Ella had to walk up. This is a picture in our gym as well. So we had a, a whole table full of executives and she, she was told right before she walked up, um, you must go up and you must, um, the sales are down. Sales are down, morale is low. You need to you boost your team up, get them back on track. And so she's walking up and she's giving a pep talk to them. <laughs> and here, um, I just wanted to show you that if you want to scale it back down, this is just even just like back to the normal thing where you just have kids lined up down the hall and they're just having a conversation. So you can do a variety of things. So those are just some of the pictures, y'all. But we have made it where we have more and more fun with it. So what I want to show we share with you is um, how do you even start something like this? Like, how would I even do this? Is this overwhelming? Well, tons of schools do this now because this is something that we have, um, we've shared with them. And so we developed, this is all free resources I wanna share with you. It's called theamazingshake.com. Make sure you go to theamazingshake.com, okay? And if you go there, what you will see are all kinds of resources for you. There's pictures from all the different things we've done, like some more of these pictures, like here, um, they had a patient that was in the hospital and they had to walk up and they had to be the doctor and have a good bedside manner and try to cheer them up. And he was like moaning and wailing. He was, he was his uh, local CEO and he was hilarious. Um, here, they walked around the corner and there was a wedding party and they had to give a toast. And so they had to give a toast to the bride and the groom. And how do you give a, an appropriate toast? Um, here, we actually had, that's a backdrop and we had a couple of seats and it was like they were getting on an airplane and they had to sit down next to somebody, but they had to crawl over the person because the person was in the middle seat. How do they do that respectfully or, you know, you know, say, excuse me and sit down and have a conversation. So you see they're all real world scenarios, but we do put some fun twists on them. So what we have on the site for you is there is a video on how we score and how you tabulate scores to do it. Okay. Um, there is also a toolkit. Okay. And this toolkit has everything in it. I'll show you in a second. These are the kinds of things that we're looking for. We're showing them. Um, but if you go to the toolkit, there's also, oh, and by the way, there's also videos on this site that you can go to, but the, the, the toolkit has things like, um, there's this guidelines for how to do this. 
and it's got a table of contents, like how do you host it? How do you prepare it? But what we wanted to do is we want to make this as easy for schools as possible. You could just be where, you, where I started off. The first thing that we used to do, you just have some executives come into your room and talk to your kids, right? And they don't have to be executives. I shouldn't just use that word. Entrepreneurs, business leaders, community leaders, the local firefighters, anybody, right? Just people from the community, but our kids engaging with all different kinds of people. But what, um, but what we do is we take it a little bit further. And so we wanted to make this as easy for schools as possible. So we developed this guide for you and you can use as much of it or as little of it as you want, but it tells you all different kinds of things. It tells you how to host one. It tells you how to prepare the students. It tells you the kinds of things that we grade them on. Um, it also, um, like here she's having to give a pep talk to the fo uh, football team. Those are our alumni who came back and she's having to give them a mid uh, a, a midterm uh, pep talk, which was really hilarious. Um, also though, in this toolkit, they have got all the different uh, assets that you might want to have. And when I say that, um, when I say that the assets, we even have logos for you. We have things that you can print and use as backdrops, everything. There is even a gong sound. If you wanna have the gong sound go off every single minute <laughs> that you have, so the gong is done. So where it says register for your school, it's free. All that does is you put your email address and put that you're downloading the stuff and that's it. Um, and on here too, there's a place where there are videos where it has, for example, here's Mr. Clark um, giving conversation tips. So it's got the video there and I didn't turn my sound on. I apologize for that. But, and there's handshake tips. There's a v version there. So you could watch that and share it with your teachers and have them work with the kids. You can't really be shaking a lot of hands right now. I realize that, but there's other tips even about how you lean in, how you have a conversation, how you introduce yourself. So there are instructional videos that you can use as well. And they're really, really helpful. Now, the thing is, the question was, how do we make this virtual? What do we do about that? Well, we have at school, if you want to do one of these at your school, you can, and you can use all of our resources. We do have something that we hold every year called, it was the National Amazing Shake. This year it was the global one where actually kids can come here and compete. And so that would be something there, there's a you know registration fee for that. Our school, by the way, is a nonprofit. So I should have mentioned that earlier that anybody who ever comes for any kind of training or anything at our school, 100% of it goes back to scholarships to support our students. Every bit of PD we do, it supports our students. Um, but we have a National Amazing Shake. And so schools, or districts even have district amazing shakes and they send their kids to Atlanta to compete in this competition. Well, this year we had the national amazing shake lined up and it became a pandemic. And so it was a mess because obviously we couldn't do it. So we went online and did the whole thing virtually. And so if you go to the global amazing, uh, if you go to our website, ronclarkacademy.com, you can see right there, the website there um, slash global, there's information on the global amazing shake. This is information on the one that we already had, but you can go in and see the resources and see how we did it, okay? And so we even, um, what we did is we divided kids into Zoom rooms for a night of coaching. And we actually had our students coach them about tips and things that they should do. We had instructional things about like Zoom tips. Like if you're gonna be on the screen, you know, you don't want your head like this and you don't want your head like this. <laughs> you know, you don't wanna be in the dark and you know, like how you would um, have those conversations on Zoom and how that's different. I um, mean, how you would make sure you speak loudly enough so the person can hear you. And so we talked to them about online tips for how you can do those things online. So here you can see like how their leaderboards and the linking, uh, the things were, but we also streamed a lot of this live on Facebook. So if you go to Ron Clark Academy um, Facebook page and you go back through, it's, it's still up. You just have to scroll back through to previous content. You can see the global amazing shake, some of the final kids in the interviews and the kinds of questions we asked. But I wanted you to see this. On the Global Amazing Shake, this was our guide we used for last year. And so there's a competitor's guide. And this competitor's guide also has information for you about like what they did to get the kids ready from their viewpoint. So you could see that even though this is for an event that we already had, we'll probably, we may have to do it again virtually this year. Um, so as you see, here's all the guidelines of how you get kids ready. And what we did for this is we did have them do some monologues and things like that. And we went ahead and gave them the monologue to learn. We gave them some things like this. They had to talk about directions, how to get somewhere. It's all real world skills and um, some things they had to memorize, some things, questions. So that might be something that if you look through that, that might help you. It might give you an idea of some things that you may want to do. And so it's a wonderful resource kit for you, but I don't want to give it to you if it makes you overwhelmed. I want you to remember, we have been doing this for 13 years. And so what I want you to understand is that the first year we did it, we just had about 20 people from the Atlanta community come in and talk to our kids.
But then after that, it became bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they would tell their business friends and they would tell their business friends. And y'all got to be honest with y'all about something. Funding is so hard right now, right? I mean, you know, funding is so hard for schools. It's, it's so frustrating. And um, in the back in the old days, when I started, there used to be businesses that would just give to schools that every year they would just write a check to a school. Now, because businesses are hurting, um, a lot of times those businesses have to, um, they really need to make sure that there's going to be an investment that's good bang for their buck, so to speak. Like they want to see, is it something that, um, that's going to benefit their school in some way? I mean, their, their, their business in some way, like they're doing good in the community. But one of the things I will tell you is that when you have adults coming in your building and interacting with your students in this way, or if it's not safe yet via Zoom, what it does is when it is time where that company or that business can invest or that individual wants to do something for education, who are they going to remember? They're going to remember your students. They're going to remember those students. They're like, these are the these are the kids that I want to look for because these are the kids that are being trained to go out into the world and be able to speak with confidence, be proud, you know, be proud and do all those things. So, um, so a lot of schools. Some of you just put that one of your schools hosts this annually. Yeah, a lot of schools now. What we do is we provide the resource, the guide. They do it locally, and then they send either their school winner. You can send as many kids as you want. We let each uh, school determine if they want to send a school winner or a district winner, however many kids they want to. And then we even when uh, when we have it in person, we invite educators to come too. And while the kids are doing their competition, we have workshops for teachers to teach them how you can really make this really a vibrant thing in your classroom or in your school. And, and how you can work the system. So I really hope that that's something that helps y'all. It's, um, but the, the, some of the conversations, stuff like that, and how discussion questions, there's videos on there as well. But I do encourage you to go back on the Facebook page. You're gonna have to scroll way back. There's some other professional development that's free on the Facebook page too, you can go to, it has nothing to do with this. But um, if you'll go back, you'll see the Global Amazing Shake. Um, a little girl from Honduras won it this year and she was magnificent. And so it truly was a global thing and it was really, really exciting. Um, and, and how we brought together community members to make it work for our kids. Any last questions about that before I move on to something else I would like to share with you? We good? All right. So I wanna share with you also um, how within our classrooms, we've done some activities that really help to build entrepreneurship. So um, there are some projects that we've done. And now one thing I wanna say this, um, it is great to have a career day if resources are available to you. If they're available to you, it's even more meaningful when you can take kids to an actual business. And this is the only picture I, I could find right now, but this is one of our dads of one of our students and he is an architect. And so he invited our students to come to his office and they met with all the different architects and learned everything they do there. So think about how powerful that is because if somebody comes in and goes, I'm an architect and shows some slides, that's one thing. But if I'm in the office and I feel it and I see the papers and you can see these kids are all fascinated by learning from him. And I tell you that too, because some of our partnerships have been developed after our kids visited those places. One time, let me tell you something you might not have even thought would be a cool field trip. And these are inexpensive field trips because there's no there's no fee just other than the bus trip to get there, right? It's just getting there is the issue. We went to a local Porsche dealership. Now, a Porsche dealership, what was cool about this is that we went down to where the mechanics were. And y'all, I've never in my life seen anything so pristine. Where the, they where they work on Porsches, it's, it's pristine. The floor is shiny white. They had all these Porsches up in the air and the mechanics. But what was fascinating is that the mechanics came and did a science lesson with our students while they're sitting there. And some of our kids wanted to become mechanics after learning about that. They're like, oh my gosh, it's so incredible. We've taken kids to a lot of different businesses. We've taken them to movie studios here in Atlanta. We've taken them to television stations here in Atlanta. We've taken them to all different kinds of businesses because as you all know, the more exposure kids can get to those careers that are out there, the more their brains start to think and they start to come up with ideas. Well, we went to visit a place called Are You Lied? And it's based, we were on a trip in New York and we went to Are You Lied? And they were like, we love your kids. We want to do a project with your kids. And so we partnered and they made this happen. We would have never come up with this on its own. This was several years ago, but they partnered with us in Staples. And what they did is they sent a team down here and they said, we want to show you how something is, is from the conception, you know, to the research all the way to when it's produced, what happens. And so what their team did is they, they had our students were divided into teams. They were seventh grade students at the time. And our students had to come up with what they thought would be a line of effective school supplies. 
And so they were asked to think about what are the problems with the current school supplies they have? What are things that bother them about the school supplies they have? And so, and they had to question other kids. They had to do market research and ask kids what they thought were problems with school supplies. Then after that, the different groups each came up with a prototype of what they thought would be a new improved project. And so they did, um, for example, there's a pencil case that they made and they and it was looked like a big pencil case, but it was unscrewed for storing extra pencils. There was a zipper pocket for small accessories. You can see like there's like the little sketch of it that the people from the design firm helped our students come together to make. And so every group had different projects and then they actually had Staples executives come to our school and they sat there and our students had to do a pitch on why their products should be the ones that Staples make. And it was exciting because they actually ended up making a lot of the students' projects. This is really cool. This was actually a locker. All it looks like is a big flat board with creases in it, but you put it in the locker and it and immediately um, goes like a zigzag as a locker shelf. Because I don't know if any of y'all have ever wrestled with locker shelves. They don't always fit. And then, you know, they're jamming and stuff like that. And this one, no matter what size your locker, it would fit. And so they could put their books. So they made those at Staples. Um, so this was like their line of products that our kids came up with. They had a lap desk that had all these extra um, abilities that like you know it had all this cool storage compartments their backpacks were almost like squares because they said that when they put books and stuff in backpacks and the backpack is rounded it's not real logical and at the bottom there was a zip-off compartment that came off and so this whole line was sold at staples and they actually gave some of the funds of it back to our school isn't that cool so you may not actually be able to have it say happen in a staples but you could still take that same concept and do it with your students. Another thing that happened was that we were adding an addition to our school. And a lot of these things, I just got to tell you, it comes from just having conversations, even we as the adults, with the business people with whom you interact. And so we had um, a donor that was going to be adding some carpet. It was the carpet maker to our new, our, to our new addition. And so I was just talking to her and I said, you know, so how do you even come up? There's so many carpet designs. I mean, how do you even come up with this? And she just said, I have the best idea. And I said, what? And she said, we're gonna have your kids design this carpet. I said, how in the world are they gonna design carpet? And she said, I have an idea. So what she did is she brought some of her designers to our school and they brought cameras. They got all the kids little cameras and they told the kids to walk around outside and inside and take pictures of anything they thought looked interesting. And they said, use your camera. And so Ms. Barnes, our art teacher, she got involved and was teaching them about light and perspective and all these different things on how to take cool pictures. So for example, one of our students held up these little, went to a little, uh, this dying bush that had berries and everything on it and took this close up picture of that. So they took the pictures and guess what? That was the inspiration for that carpet. Isn't that cool? And so if you look at it, the shapes of the lines and the berries and everything, that was actually what was used as the inspiration for the weave and the design of the carpet. There was one more I have to show you. There, they were building the building, as I said, so there was all this scaffolding. And so all the scaffolding, um, that's the carpet that looks like the scaffolding. So they were able to see from beginning to end how, first of all, all the people that are involved in the process, because then they actually went to the carpet factory and they were able to see the carpet being manufactured. So I understand that in some of these cases, because funding is always an issue, right? It's like, and right now I know you can't go anywhere, but we're not gonna be like this forever, y'all. We're gonna get to go places. But even if you did this in a virtual setting, right? They could still submit pictures to you. They could submit the pictures. They could work with the individuals. They could jump on a Zoom call. The person could even maybe even send a quick video of what's happening in the carpet factory or whatever it is, right? So these are things that are able to be done. And quite honestly, even when the pandemic's over, there are a lot of people in the business world who are very busy. And so they may not want to take you know, the time to drive to your school, be there, come back, but they will hop on a Zoom call with your kids for a few minutes. And so, or my, you know, whatever Google Meets or whatever it is you're able to use in your district. But it's still, as you can see, that's just some real world positive stuff to do. Another thing I want to share with you, I'm sorry, I'm just flying through these, but I want to give you as many things as you can take with you, um, is this. Um, we have kids that, because we talk a lot about these kind of things, that they have started their own little businesses. Um, so this is Jacob. Uh, this is when he was, he's in the eighth, he just graduated the eighth grade. So he's in the ninth grade now, actually. But when he was in the eighth grade, he loves woodworking and he's really good, y'all. And so one of the things I would say is that as you have conversations with students, ask them things they'd like to do and just ask them if they have business aspirations, or if they ask if they have entrepreneurial stuff they want to do and help guide them. And so, for example, Jacob, he makes planters. And so he makes 
makes these wooden planters. He sells them. And so we talked to him about marketing. We talked to him about his website, everything. He went and got a little brand, which is because we were talking about, do you have a logo, Jacob? Do you have something that some people remember? And so he actually went and got a little logo and he like, he like brands it onto his boxes. And so it's helping students understand all of the steps of the entrepreneurial steps. Um, some of my students here, like Nadia, she's an artist. And so she's made her artist shop online and just kind of talking to her about that. Um, and also, I think it's important to explain to kids how nonprofits work as well. Um, these are all on the, uh, on the left right here. These are all graduates of the Ron Clark Academy. And these are, girls are all in college right now. And they're extraordinary young women. And they have a, a, an Instagram page called The Coco Diaries. And they've been talking to us about insight, about how to do that. And so we've been helping them and, and, and working with them. But what's so beautiful is that um, what they do is they're a nonprofit and they have, um, they do fundraising and they have provided scholarships to other young black women so that they can go to college and have scholarships for needs that they have. And so this is just college students helping other college students, which I think is extraordinary. Um, and so um, this is one of my former students, Misty, and she loves to cook. And she has her own hamburger business, catering business. And I was so excited because she was so proud. Um, this is the day she bought her first truck, her food truck, so she can deliver things. And, you know, she's 22 years old and here she's got her, her food truck. And so the big thing is that when we're doing that um, is that we make sure that we sit down with kids if they ever want expertise. We'll tell them everything from like, how do you set up a LinkedIn? Um, what does a resume look like? We even do those kind of things, resume building. Um, how do you write a thank you note? Back when I told you that Willie at the very beginning had business cards, what we did is I taught them, I said, let's take all these business cards. I said, I'm going to teach you how to respond to these business cards. And so I taught them, how do you write a, just a note, a quick email saying, um, you know, you know, my, you know, dear Mr. So-and-so, it was a pleasure to meet you at the Coca-Cola event. Um, I was very, very impressed with all the work you're doing, da da da, da. And then, um, and so I teach them how to write an email and then they would send it, just tell them what a pleasure it was to meet them. Every single one of them got a response back, every single one of them. And some of those kids actually ended up getting internships from people they met in sixth grade because they stayed connected to them via email. And those, per and those people were so impressed that a child fifth and sixth grade would write an email expressing gratitude or just being honored to meet someone. So just teaching them all of those. And the thing is, you can weave it into your curriculum. I mean, that for me, teaching them how to write a thank you email is as easy, you know, it's part of our language arts, but you have people in your building that it's not like this is an addition to, this is woven into your curriculum in such a way that it's a real world experience. Um, I got to answer, let me, let me tell you one more thing because I got so much I want to share with you. Oh, I do want to show you um, one more well, I'll skip to this. Okay. I got more than I have time to share with you is, is, is the issue, but that's a good problem, I guess, isn't it? Um, so this is the last set. On the classroom level, some of you may be joining me and be going like, okay, I don't really have the power to do, or I, right now, I don't even have the emotional capacity to do something this big. I get it. None of us right now, right now, we're just, we're just getting, hanging on. We're just pushing through y'all. <laughs> So you may be like, that's more than I'm willing to do. Let me just tell you about a couple of things I've done in my classroom, just at a classroom level that were just more um, simulations instead of like the real deal where I was actually engaging community leaders and things. So for example, I'm sorry, I didn't realize what a bad copy that is. Um, I teach my kids all about uh, propaganda, advertising, commercials, and things like that um, as part of one of my standards and media savvy and all those different kinds of things. And so I've done simulations where I put them in a team. I say, okay, you all are a team. Um, I'm, I am the head of Luminosity Advertising Agent, Agency, and your teams are designers that are supposed to come up with um, design, plan, and pitch, and implement a marketing and advertising campaign for our biggest client, Fresh Health Foods. And so I tell them it's a breakfast cereal called Poofy Doodles, and I tell them about the product. It says you must create effective strategies for marketing a healthy children's breakfast cereal. I talk through everything they have to do. And then I tell them the problem about it being highly competitive and children are inundated with commercials about sugary breakfast cereals. And so their problem is, is they have to create the marketing, the packaging, the branding and everything for Poofy Doodles in such a way that it appeals to kids when they're in mama's grocery cart going through the store or it's on a commercial, but also appeals to moms because it's a healthy breakfast alternative. And so they have to use all the strategies I've taught them. They come up with, I give them like a box and they have to design the cereal box. They come up with their, their um, billboard campaign and they make a commercial. And that's something you could definitely do virtually, right? So that would be something that they could do. And then though, I have them pitch it. So what I do is there's a day and I just actually, sometimes I even get teachers in the building, right? I just get teachers in the building and they come in and they pretend they're the executives and they sit down and it's kind of like Shark Tank, you know, they have to get up and they have to say, you should go with our team's idea. 
here's what we've come up with. Here's our logo. Here's our marketing. Here's our pitch. And it's teaching them to how to be able to pitch something. Um, I also teach them how to do an elevator speech. And by that, I mean, um, you can practice with lots of topics. Like, for example, if somebody walks up to one of my students or someone, they say, if you go to the Ron Clark Academy, what is the Ron Clark Academy? I teach them they have to be able to explain very, very succinctly what the Ron Clark Academy is in one minute. An elevator speech is being able to talk about a product, anything in one minute. So you can give them, you could even give them a, a product. Like they walk in your class and you have a product sitting on the desk and you have all those details about this product. And you say, you need to write your elevator speech about it. And so then they have to get it from the class and they have to tell you about this product in one minute, everything that is the most important thing to know. That helps kids to be able to pull out main points, key points, important information to be succinct with their language. So when you're doing things like that, the the um, the reach is even more helpful because it's not just about the product. Um, here's another thing I did with my kids. It's just kind of fun. I after I do that, I also teach my kids descriptive writing. So I'm teaching middle school kids. So I tell them that they have to have a clothing line but it has to be silly, mismatched, ridiculous clothing. And they have to write about it like it's the most magnificent thing that has ever been worn. And then we have a fashion show. I'm gonna show you, we did it this year virtually because of course we couldn't do it in person. But the idea is that it's teaching them the skill of playing with language, but also um, just the fun behind um, just the fun behind um, it is, is silly, but it teaches them all about marketing. And it also even teaches them a little bit about media manipulation and how that works. So let me share my sound. Let me show you just the kids, what they did virtually is at home, they each filmed a segment and then I spliced them all together. So these are some segments of what they came up with about their products. Well, I was playing it. Hold on, there it goes, my bad. Let's start with this rose gold, shimmery, glossy and radiant vest. It is a limited edition, one of a kind. Look at how those comfy, flexible, and delightful tights just hook her skin. Like cotton candy, those tights feel just like fluff and will bring a whole lot of goodness to your life. Fanny packs are cool again. This bright colored, high quality red fanny pack is a practical wear for the busy man on the go. Its hands-free design is cool, useful, and versatile. Take a look. It's this floppy hat is the new trend. You can wear it anywhere and light up the whole room. This topper is made out of the finest fabric and will have you feeling like you're on a cloud. It's breathable, soft, comfortable, and luxurious. Tay Tay is also showing us a colorful polka dotted scarf with pink pompas. It's made out of stretchy fabric and it's one of a kind. It will bring out your colorful personality. Next. Are you tired of going out with your friends but the sun ruins everything? Well, fear no more, because these glasses have anti-glare lenses, so you can see everything, even when it is super sunny. These sunglasses are made to feel pleasurable, and they look splendid. Timothy is wearing an outfit that is perfect for a day of Zoom classes. Let's begin with his eyewear. These lightweight, multicolor glasses are from the Ledford Lens Collection. They are not only smart glasses, but they work as blue lens glasses protecting your eyes from the harsh light of computers. Have you ever been on a quiz and misclicked, but you couldn't find a way to let out that anger? This is why Timothy is wearing the all new stress glove. This sleek glove features the capability of being able to hit a table without breaking it. It's easy on the hands because it's filled with hand-picked wool from the finest sheep in the land. And don't worry, you can still type with it. So you get the idea. So, oh, hold on a second. I didn't stop the video. So you get the idea. They're being creative. They're being silly, but they're also learning skills. So how, if, if I were an entrepreneur and I had a product, I had something I wanted to share. How can I talk about it? How do I market it? How do I share with other people? How do I say things? Oh gosh, you couldn't see the video the whole time I did that. Well, that's a crisis. Okay. So <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had sharing the video and I guess I did not share the screen. Um, I'm going to, you've already heard it, but let me just, I'll show you just one second of it. Cause we're about to run out of time, but I do want you to see, cause it's, it's, so it helped. That was just bad sharing on my part. Let me try that again. I think I clicked the sound is what I did and I didn't click the video. Okay, can y'all see that one now, right? Let's start with this rose gold, shimmery, glossy, and radiant vest. 
It is a limited edition, one of a kind. Look at how those come. So you can see the difference. It's breathable, soft, comfortable, and like I'm just saying. Cool, useful, and versatile. Take a look. This, this floppy hat is the new trend. Sun ruins everything? Well, fear no more, because these glasses have anti-glare lenses, so you can see everything. And then there's the, there's the glove you're talking about. This is why Timothy is wearing the all-new stress glove. This sleek glove features the capability. All right, so you get a little a snippet of it. So they just basically, they all filmed their own part, and then I spliced them all together, and we had a day where we viewed the fashion show. But you could do that uh, virtually with anything, right? As far as like they could do one minute elevator pitches or they could do, um, you know, where you give them an imaginary product or something that they have, have created on their own. How do I pitch it? How do I advertise it? All of those different kinds of things. Teach them about media savvy. And it's really great to pull up a lot of um, uh, like on, on YouTube, go pull up old commercials. And, 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 you know, we even analyzed different political commercials and it wasn't like we were one side or the other, but I was like, let's look at the different things. Let's look at two people talking about the same thing because it teaches them to be really savvy and media consumers, which is another important thing for them to be, um, to be successful entrepreneurs. So, um, any, qu I know that I've just talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and I apologize, but I hope that, because I, I had so much I wanted to share with you, but do you all have any other questions for me or Andrea, did you see any questions that I missed that, that I need to answer for people? No, I think we've gotten them all. Okay. So how much time do they prepare for the fashion picture activity? Um, I, we wrote, um, I had like a silly, crazy outfit on and we had a day where they were, ex well, let me start back backwards. We spent about a week on advertising techniques, commercials, the different strategies that advertisers use, and about commercials and print advertising. Then the next week, um, we were learning. Uh, I had already taught these kids are fifth graders. Um, I had taught them some more about descriptive writing last year. I taught them last year as well. So we um, talked about descriptive writing, but I said, now we're going to put a, pitch, a twist on it with marketing. And so I had a crazy outfit. We spent a couple of days, we spent a day where uh, we wrote about my outfit. We did one together. And then um, they had about, a, they had a day or two to write their ensemble. And then I gave them, I gave them several days to videotape it because just because you know how, um, so I, I gave them like four or five days just to get the video done. And you have to work with kids. All of our kids have um, iPads at their house. So we're very blessed in that way. But what I did was I said, if you don't even, I tried to explain to them how to do the sound over. I said, but if you can't do that, you can just send me the video and the sound and I'll put them together for you. Or I even said, um, if you just have somebody else read it in your house, or you can send me the video and your script and I'll read it and do the voiceover. So I was trying to make it because I could have spent a lot of days teaching them how to make the movie. For me, that wasn't my purpose. But if, if it's something that's your purpose, you could also teach them all of those you know, skills on how to do that on iMovie and that kind of stuff like that. So question was how to follow up with me. Okay, so um, first of all, I am at Kim Bearden everywhere. Um, and so let me put that in the chat. Um, and so when I say that, I, I'm... I'm not on TikTok. I, I, I watch TikTok, but I'm not, I haven't done anything on TikTok. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. But um, on everything else, on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter, um, I tend to put the most lesson ideas on Instagram. Um, if you look at my highlights um, on Instagram, you know, those little circles, there are lots of teaching videos there about lots of ideas, entrepreneurial ideas, and just flat out just teaching ideas. I make one little minute videos that teach you how to do stuff. Um, and on there, there's the fashion show, but when it's done in the class instead of the virtual, but I thought right now it'd be more meaningful to show you the virtual version. Um, and so you can follow me there. Also um, at Ron Clark Academy. Um, and we do a lot of, uh, a lot of professional development online as well that we do. Um, a lot of times we do like Facebook lives where we just give little mini tips. And also we have something called Club RCA, the one way to try to keep our funding available um, for our students during this difficult time. Because usually, like I said, we have 15,000 educators come and they're not coming right now uh, because of the pandemic. Um, we have something called Club RCA where we have educators. You can register for that. There's a monthly fee of $19 a month. But what we do is we meet every single Tuesday. We meet on Zoom and all the teachers at RCA do kind of what I've just done right now. All we do is just give you ideas, ideas, ideas. And we, we do a little community building because we're on the Zoom with you. We, we get to know people. We get to build relationships. And so there's like a community. Um, and then if you can't see it live, we have it. We, we send the recording out the next day with all the resources and stuff. So that's something you can learn about on ronclarkacademy.com. So I hope that this is a lot of stuff that you could figure out. Here's the big picture, but how you could take it down and make it manageable, especially during this difficult time, but also think big for the future when you, when you have more, when we have more energy to dig in and do the stuff the way maybe we could have done it before. So any other questions? 
I see a question. Will you be at our Inspire Conference in December? And we're going to have to continue to talk about that. We'd love to have you come back anytime that we can. We'll, we'll talk about that. Sounds like a great conference because it sounds like right up our alley with what we do around here. So it'd be great. I've never had the pleasure of going before. All right, y'all. Well, I hope you have an incredible weekend. Try to get your phenomenal educators to be on here on a Saturday morning because right now everybody needs rest. So the fact that you're taking your Saturday morning just to learn, just it, it, it speaks so highly of the type of educator you are. So thank you for joining me this morning. I'm very, very grateful. And I hope these are things that you can take moving forward. But um, appreciate y'all and appreciate your time so much.